The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 27th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can send me an email. Now, send that off early. Send that to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow's off 77 points, about a quarter of a percent. Basically, the S&P is flat right now. It's down one point. The Nasdaq is up seven points. That's flat. The Russell's up 20 points. That is not flat. That's up over 1% out there. The semi's up nearly 1%. They're trading out at 33.56. That's a 27-point move. Trannies are basically flat out there. Gold is not flat. It's off 18 bucks. Silver's down 31 pennies. That's 1% and 1.3% respectively. Uh, light sweet crude is up over 3%. It's trading out at 93.80, uh, 93.30 right now. It's changing quickly. Natural gas is up uh, seven pennies, trading out at 219 or 291, I should say. And the 30-year Treasury printing at 114.13. Lead to the charge dollar-wise. The upside you get Alpha Metallurgical Resources up 6% or 50. 15 bucks. HubSpot, 13 bucks, 3%. The OIH up 11 bucks, 3%. Costco up 10 bucks, nearly 2%. Hubble Inc. up $9. That's nearly a 3% move. To the downside, $8 to the downside, 18%. That's Next Terra Energy. Stryker Corp. is off 5 bucks, 2%. The Pellis Pharmaceuticals down 5 bucks, 11%. Solano Therapeutics down 4 bucks. That's a 14% move. And Chi Chi Group down 24%. That is a $4 move to the downside. Let's begin. Let's begin with uh, take a look at what's going on from a market breadth standpoint. Short term wise, here's the 30 minute market breadth. This is for the S&P 500, 101 above, 245 below. That is bearish market breadth for it. Let's take a look at the NDX 100 as well. The NDX 100 market breadth shows we have, come on, Come on, calculate. 24 instruments trading above profile, 34 below. So it is also bearish. Real quickly, take a quick peek in on the others. I got to imagine everything here is set to uh, a bearish crossover as well. This is what do we have? Those are the ETFs out here. Let's get to the, uh, if you give me a moment, let's get to the. Uh, uh, S&P 500 is bearish for each of its time frames. NASDAQ 100 bearish for each. Ah, the 60 minute. That's odd. So the 60 minute for the. Uh, for the uh, NASDAQ 100 has positive market breadth, 42 above and 32 below. So we'll check in on those charts out here. In fact, let's go check in on the intraday charts for the NQ as we speak right now. So let's move over. Give me a moment here to get those fired up on my screen. Is that the NQ it is? So let's go change screens out here and get a feel for what the 60 minute time frame chart is or isn't doing for us since that has some positive market breadth, the only one that we've seen so far. So let's open up that 60 minute chart. We got a nice wide ranging bar that's getting back to its TD9 count bottom. Okay, so this is going to be uh, helpful to all of you traders out there. And that is on a 60 minute time frame chart, you've got price moving down into this TD9 count bottom formed at 4 p.m. yesterday afternoon and completed uh, at, uh, uh, by 5 p.m. And if we take a look at that, that swing point 
out here, the low, that's the number to be watching. It's 14,666. Well, that sounds devilish, doesn't it? 14,666 and a quarter. If price closes below that, I can assure you we are headed for lower price inside the NQ. But right now, you've got positive market breadth. We can see it's doing everything it can to fight that uh, swing point and that uh, bottom signal out there. The key level, so you know what the key level to the downside is. The key level to the upside, first key level is going to be 14,796. That's the top of its uh, current profile. That profile has been tested and rejected. So close above that would then signal move to its TD9 count breakout area at 14.893. So we've got both the upside and the downside covered, and it's really going to be the NQ that should be the leader out here. At least that's what I'm taking a look at as we speak right now. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart here for the NQ, you're going to see bar number, a TD9 count is going to form today. Well, it will form today as long as price closes below the close of bar number five, 14.862.75. The pattern will complete tomorrow meaning that you could get a lower low. Um, uh, right now, bar number eight is the uh, lowest low of the pattern. You could get a lower low tomorrow out there. The five-minute chart says not so fast. The five-minute chart shows a nice Rosemontum indicator bottom, was formed with a bullish hammer candle, and price is now pulling back and testing support. Support is its bullish structured area. That is between 14,695 and 14,724. And if price can maintain its, if price can maintain closing above that center of that profile, which it has done for the last two bars, if it does that on this bar as well, that's telling us that price wants to make its way to 14,868. 14,868, what was the number that we had in the 60-minute? 14,893. So 14,868 to 14,893 would be the key resistance zone for the NQ out there. With regard to the other time frames, the four hour has the same roads momentum indicator bottom pattern. 14,835 is its resistance level. Price has pulled back and tested and rejected support so far. That's the bottom of its profile. TD9 count on the 120 minute chart. That formed a, well, that's not going to form a TD9 count top out there, even though bar number eight, not unless there's a huge, well, this, uh, this is 12 noon close. We'd have to get one heck of a rally to get a TD9 count top here. But what we can say is price certainly consolidated between that profile and the 120-minute chart. That's between 14.688 and 14.802. So that's the NQ. Let's go ahead and put up the um, – let's do this here. Let's just simply go over and take a look at the uh, daily time frame charts out here. This is for each of the futures contract. This way you'll be able to see that each of them have um, – have TD9 count potential bottoms that should form today or could form today. They each need close below that uh, bar number five. We covered that for the NQ. For the ES Mini, the close will need to be below today, 43.72. In the case of the Dow, the close today, this should, this should be pretty easy, a close below 34.337. And in order for the Russell 2000 to generate its uh, uh, TD9 count bottom today, price is going to have to close below. Let me move this over to the side just a tad. Price is going to have to close below the close again of bar number five, 1797.90. And we're trading right now at 1797. So watch that. Watch the Russell 2000 as well. Uh, now, again, that pattern, the TD9 count pattern, can complete tomorrow. This says we should be in an area where the oversold rally begins to start working. I'm not saying necessarily begins to start working at 11 14 in the morning, but between today and tomorrow. But in order to uh, confirm that, we're going to go have to take a look at the U.S. dollar index, which Peak G wants to do. And we'll try to do that during that next uh, session. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer. But the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So uh, the following things are on deck. We're going to take a look at the USO. This is from yesterday. This is for Dude Inside the Tiger Sand. We're going to look at Apple, the U.S. dollar index, uh, basically, for Peak G. Hector and Johnny want to take a look at the GDX, IONQ for Dan, and Dennis wants to take a look at AMGN. But, of course, I'd love more requests, so keep them firing away. So with regard to the USO, the USO, we talked about this yesterday. I'm going to switch over to those charts here momentarily. We'll get to take a look at this. So the USO, if you are trading that, you're trading, uh, you're trading in essence, long uh, light sweet crude out here. What you need to know is that USO is made up of six different instruments right now. So you've really got to be able to track those six different instruments. We're going to go take a look at those momentarily. And... Give me a moment here because you don't have a choice. Screens, let's get up to this one. So now we're on that screen. Uh, let me also do this at the same time. So here's what I'm saying, uh, which is if you take a look at USO and you take a look at the holdings, these are the holdings as of last, it uh, says as of September 1. Okay. Well, as of September 1, here are the holdings out. That's wild. Yesterday we were looking at something that had the, uh, oh, here we go, September 26th. There we go. Okay, perfect. So here, if we take a look at the holdings out here, you can see you've got the November, January, June. Uh, first, you got November of 2023. Okay, so the current month that we're in, current contract. And that has, as a percentage-wise, well, it's kind of weird. I, you have to go figure out those percentages out here because that looks like that top uh panel is as of September 1st. So you want to take a look at what's going on as of September 26th. So uh, here what you need to, so you see all these different future contracts. You've got March of 2024, February of 2024, December 2023, June of 2024, January of 24. These are all the contracts that you need to know what's going on if you're going to be trading USO. I actually don't have all of those correct because I was looking at the weighting. So what we have out here is you've got so we've got November of 2023. Okay, we've got that out here. We've got January of 2024. So that's over there. You've got June of 2024 down here. You've got December 2023. Where do we have that? Well, 
Okay, so we've got December. So, all right, so we have these future contracts. But here's what you here's what you would really be looking at, dude, in order to pos in order to properly manage that trade. Not just take a look at what the November contract is doing, uh, because that does not even represent the uh, bulk of what's inside of USO. But as we take a look at each of these charts out here, what do we see? First, with regard to the November contract, we can see that price is now trying to take out the top of its daily profile. The top of that profile is 91.80. If it does that, it suggests that price is going to continue to move higher. Now, that continue to move higher, there's an A to B equals CD. If you caught the uh, 11 a.m. update, you saw me, and each day you see that out there. There's an A to B equals CD that gets us a 96.70. What I will share, in fact, I'll just switch over. I'll just switch charts. We'll take a look at this, try to do this one step at a time out here. Hopefully, I do a good job of switching back and forth from screens out here. Here is the November contract for Lights We Crude. Let's uh, get this so you can see the swing point that we used out there. So there's your A to B equals CD pattern. Now that retracement was about 32% out there. First a 32, re oh, you're not seeing it. First a 32% retracement is it, the first thing that, first message that comes with that at an A to B equals CD is that this is gonna do more than a one-to-one. -one. Now we can see that price along the left-hand side of the C to D leg. So A to B and C to D have the exact same angle. That's really important to help you understand what's being communicated to us. We now have a stronger move along the C to D leg than we did along that A to B leg. What's that tell us? That tells us we are likely gonna do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. So what I will share with you is the initial price target for late sweet crude to the upside is 96.70. This is the November contract that we're taking a look at. And that says uh, that price wants to go target that area. If it does, and you get a bearish reversal candle, well, then you'd get a sell the D point. Short of that, more likely what price is going to do is go target the 101.97 area. Now let's go switch back from a USO standpoint to the holdings with inside that. So if you give me a moment, we'll get right back there. And here with regard to those contracts, December of 2023 is breaking out above the top of its profile. January of 2024 is testing right now the top of its profile. And that's up at the 89.24 level, or just slightly above that. February 2024, it's got resistance up at 87.65. We're trading below that. March of 2024, right now, is just consolidating with inside its profile. That level of resistance is 86.67 and 84.15 is support. And June of 2024 has got resistance 84.13 and 80.89. So you've got the profile levels due to be watching out there. And those are what are going to impact the USO. If we go take a look at the USO charts out here, and I, want you, I don't want to do a, you a disservice by only looking at USO and not describing what you really should be looking at. So now if we go take a look at the USO charts out here. So we'll get those up on our screen. This will take just a moment. See where it is at. Okay, so in the case of USO, it right now is trading above both a prior swing point as well as the top of its profile, 8134. Now, in the case of the USO, it's triggered a roads momentum indicator pattern. None, well, we actually had a couple uh, uh, RMI signals that were triggered inside of Lights Recruit as well. That's really important also for you to be watching, dude, because if you get a bearish reversal candle, that's going to confirm a roads momentum indicator top, and that should take price back to support levels. Support levels would be profile areas. If if it's trading within that uh, or the oscillator and change line if it's trading above that which it is right now uh, so your support areas on USO are going to be at 8206 and 8134 the weekly chart for USO shows an A to B equal CD to the upside out there uh, and it shows a negated TD9 count top with regard to the monthly chart, the monthly chart says he eventually wants to get to 92.20. So that's USO, but dude and everybody else who trades USO, please pay attention to the holdings that are inside there. That's going to help answer your question. That's going to come into your mind, which is why isn't USO necessarily reflecting what you're taking a look at in the current or the active uh, lights we crude contract out there and it's because you've got five other contracts that you need to deal with and manage so thanks for waiting an extra day on that let's go to the next question which is from john inside the tiger's den he wants to take a look at apple now apple yesterday closed right on its swing point it's trading below that right now the swing point that could be generated an a to b equals cd to the downside so if we take a look at that swing point that swing point is back here on august 18th the low of that swing point was 171.96. Yesterday's close, 171.96. Now, the volume yesterday was 64 million. The volume of that swing point is 61 million shares. Well, guess what? 
Right now, today, inside of Apple, you've got 19 million shares. You've got 20 million shares. So if we just simply multiply that times three, we're going to get to that 60. So you could really get a confirmation of an A to B equals CD on the daily time frame for Apple if we get a close below that uh, 171.96, and especially if it's more than 61 million shares out there. So that's what you want to be looking at. What happens if it closes below that on less than 61 million shares? It still triggers an A to B equal CD to the downside. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, get over to that here momentarily. The weekly time frame chart has brought price right back to support. And support here is the TD9 count breakout area. So what you really need to see here, uh, John, is you want to, uh, in order for Apple to really give us a signal that's moving to the downside, we covered it on a daily basis. On a weekly basis, you want to see it close below 170.42. And then the monthly chart says you want to see it close below 168.79. That's the top of his profile for this bad news for this A to B equal C to the downside to take fruition. When we get back from this break, I'll summarize what I just said with regard to Apple. I'll give you what the A to B equal C D downside target would be. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. So to summarize uh, Apple, if it closes below 170, 196 today, it's going to trigger an A to B equals CD to the downside. I don't want you to get too caught up into that just yet because this is all really about breaking through support levels. On a weekly basis, we need to see a close below 170.42 to suggest that that A to B equals CD pattern would come to fruition. But then we come to the monthly chart. The monthly chart has support out here at 168.79. So 168.79 is going to be the make or break level for Apple. And if you get a close below that, then 163.71 becomes the first price target on the A to B equals CD to the downside out there. Let's go to our next request. The next request coming in from Pete G, who wanted to take a look at the U.S. dollar index. So his question was, what's going on with the U.S. dollar index? So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to change over to the white background screen. So I'm not going to actually show you the U.S. dollar index because in order to do that, I would have to shut down a bunch of things and put in a new data feed. What I can share with you with regard to the U.S. dollar index is that today is the day following bar number nine. Today is the completion of a TD nine count top. So if the day is a completion of a TD nine count top, we need to understand what's going on on the three instruments that make up 83.1% of the holdings. That happens to be the euro, the yen, and the pound. For that, I don't need to change my data feeds out here, and instead we can look at them. So with regard to the euro, the euro negated a uh, buy the D point pattern a couple of days ago. It's in bar number four to the downside. The only way that the euro gives us a sign that, uh, that it's getting ready to at least bounce up, at least towards the sauce and change line is with a bullish reversal candle. We're trading below yesterday's low. I don't expect that the U.S. dollar index is going to make any turn today. Maybe it makes that turn tomorrow. If we take a look at the Japanese yen, if it doesn't make that turn tomorrow, I don't care if it's got a TD9 count top that's completed. It will get negated. It'll get taken out. If we take a look at the U.S. dollar Japanese yen, as this chart, as it moves higher, it weakens uh, the uh, it, this would be weak and the U.S. dollar index is getting stronger. So now you can see that green oscillator and change line has acted as a key level of support. The last three trading sessions, you do have a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. Uh, that needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm that it wants to move lower or strengthen versus the uh, get stronger versus the uh, U.S. dollar index out there. So uh, this would get the yen would get stronger. The U.S. dollar would weaken the great British pound. This is going to complete. So this is the biggest hope out here. But, geez, there's only a 12 percent waiting inside the entire U.S. dollar index. This has the, the best bottoming signal, best potential bottoming signal right now. And that is that it is going to complete a TD nine count pattern today. It's also in wave number seven, letter G. So if we get a higher low tomorrow, that will confirm the wave number seven. And as long as we don't close below today's low, whatever that is, then what we should see is a great British pound bounce up to the 1.22 level. So with regard to the U.S. dollar index, yes, it is in a TD nine count top that is going to complete today. We should see the U.S. dollar index pull back. But if it's going to do that, it needs these three currency pairs to participate. Well, let's not stop there. Let's at least go take a look at what's going on on the short term. And that would be the 30-minute time frame chart. So I happen to have those charts. We're going to pull those up on your screen. On the left, you see the euro. If we take a look at patterns that are out here on the euro, it also has just formed wave number seven. That is letter G. Let me see. Are we got the same low? That low is 1.0507, 1.0577. Point. So uh, what we need to see in the next half hour, not the one between 1130 and 12, is we simply need to see a higher low. If we do, that confirms a wave seven bottom. That should then take price up to its oscillator and change line. That's at a buck five and it's changing 1.0527 right now. If price can overcome that, then what price would do would be rally up to 105.48. If it does that, because of the weighting, 57.6% of the U.S. dollar index, we should see the U.S. dollar index start to back off. If we take a look at the Japanese yen, it's in the process of potentially, we're only four minutes into this bar, but it, if it does generate a bearish reversal candle, then it too would signal some type of short-term top. That would suggest that it would strengthen and move lower and go target its oscillator and change line, which is about 149.33. So, so far, we've got two of the three. We haven't gotten to the third one just yet. Two of the three are suggesting that we could see, we could start seeing a turn in the U.S. dollar index. If we take a look at the Great British Pound, just to finish it off, it is also in wave number seven. Now, we need to see a higher low take place there. That would be in the 12 to 12.30 session. Price right now is taking on its profile level. So um, hard to say whether that's going to come to fruition. But peak G... Now that we've dialed down into the short-term time frame charts, this is where we start to see things turn first out there. There is some potential. Um, 
So that's what's going on with regard to the U.S. dollar index. We'll have a better feel for this probably overnight and uh, into uh, tomorrow's uh, show out there. So we'll certainly want to take a look at that again. So I hope that'll help you out there, Pete, with regard to the U.S. dollar index. Uh, we've got the next, let me close these charts out here, just get rid of some resources. And let's go to our next request, which is from Hector and uh, Johnny D, who both want to take a look at the GDX. Let's see, which screen I'm on that screen? Let's change screens here. Let's do this. I'm going to change the black background screens first. And we'll pull up the GDX out here. And the GDX is uh, got several A to B equal CD patterns to the downside. So let's take a look at the first one. Let's take a look at the main one that does set up out here. So that's going to look like this. The A to B, the A point, pretty easy to identify the A point. So the A point is going to be the high, and that took place on May the 4th. Now, the B point, some people might say, well, Steve, can't you use this swing right here for May 30th? And I can't. And the reason that I can't is because we see a higher high that takes place after that, and we also see a lower low. So I've got to go in order to properly do the A to B equals CD pattern. I'm going to use the lowest low out here that I can, which is June the 29th, and then because of that retracement that uh, back in the high on July 18th, that becomes the C point. Now, with regard to B points out here, was this pass with volume? The volume was 17 million shares. That was on June 29th. When that was passed, that was passed with 20 million shares. So the GDX has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside pattern with the one-to-one -one price projection level being 25.43. There's another A to B equals CD that could form today, a smaller one with inside the larger one. And that would say that the A point would be where our C point is. The B point is going to be the low. Let's see, where's the low? Is that this bar here? 2730, 2727. That's going to be the low of August 21st. And then the high that came in was back here on September 20th. Now, that swing point has volume of 18 million shares. So far, we've done 9.6 million shares in just a little over two hours of trading. So this has the volume to suggest that that A to B equals CD pattern is also in play. That one-to-one -one price projection gets us down to 2448. So right now, if you get a close below 2727 today, odds favor a move down to the 2448. 2543 area. I'm not saying that's where price would stop. It's all going to be about the U.S. dollar index, which leads us into the discussion we just had with regard to peak G. We know that there's a directional correlation between the GDX and gold. And so if we do get a turn inside the U.S. dollar index, and even though we've got these A to B equals CD patterns, odds favor doesn't guarantee it, but odds favor that we would at least see some type of rally along with gold and with, uh, uh, with the uh, dollar point back out there. So you really got to kind of put those three things together to do a proper analysis of the uh, GDX. So Hector and Johnny, I hope that that helps you out. Uh, right now, you've got the GDX taking on a swing point that did volume of 80 million shares. That's from August 14th. Right now, we're at 44 million shares, and we're about halfway. We're not even halfway through the trading week, so to speak. We now they need another hour uh, in order to accomplish push that. Uh, so you've got even volume pressing up against that swing point. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll get back. We're going to take a look at IONQ, Amgen, ACST, and Microsoft. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at Chick Symbol IONQ. This is for ABCD inside the Tiger's Den, Ionic Inc. You can see this formed a nice Rhodesmentum indicator top, nice bearish shooting star candle back here on the trading day of September 12th. From there, it was a beeline down until it formed a TD nine count pattern that confirmed yesterday. It's completing today out here. And we have a new profile, Dan. So that new profile tells you that your next resistance point, the next battle for this, is up at the 1485 level. If price can overcome 1485, which it should be able to do that, it should at least be able to spike that oscillator and change line, which recently changed colors. Now, when it changes from green to red, if price gets up there, tests and rejects that line, that would be a bearish signal. But of course, you also want to take into consideration the new market profile because those are other levels of potential support. So where's the support here? It's between 1343 and 1390. Why between that area? Because it's a bullish structured profile. And the resistance level we just covered, that was at 1485. If price can overcome that oscillator and change line, then it's going to signal to you and I that wants to make a move to 1929. That's what the daily time frame chart is telling us. Now, if we take a look at the consecutive days lower out here, it was a gigantic one. So, you know, the, the odds of that TD9 count holding were pretty decent. This was seven, eight, nine consecutive sessions to the downside. Well, you should see at a minimum, I would say, would be at least a two to three day rally out there. Watch what happens as price hits those levels. If we take a look at the weekly and the monthly time frame chart, we just have a good old fashioned consolidation after a Rosemont indicator top on the weekly with inside its uh, profile levels. And that would be between the range of 1222 to 1675. The uh, monthly chart prices back into its bullish structured profile area, and that's between 995 and 1423 out here. So I would leave you like this, Dan. You're off to a good start. Watch how price deals with that oscillator and change line. Should it be able to get up there? It does have resistance at that 1485 area. So I hope that that helps you out. And thank you so much for taking the time to put in a request. Dennis, inside the Tiger's Den, also put in a request. He wants to take a look at Amgen. And Dennis is interested in the longer-term time frame. So let's start with the longer-term time frame for Dennis, and that is the monthly chart. 
Now, on a monthly basis, what you have is a good old-fashioned consolidation with insider profile levels. If at the end of the month, price can close above 267.32, that would suggest to you and I that price wants to go target that road momentum indicator top. That's the high from November 22nd out there. We are trading inside that swing point. The volume there was 64 million shares. So far, we are at 40 million shares. So you're trading that swing point with lighter volume. Does that matter? Not necessarily. Uh, as long as price closes above the top of that monthly profile, that's going to be your signal that longer term price wants to go test that 296.67 level. Before price can do all of that, now that we step back and take a look at the weekly time frame chart, on the weekly time frame chart, do we have an A to B equals CD pattern? Nothing just yet, but if we do get a close above the high of the week of August 18th, 268.24, that would then trigger an A to B equals CD to the upside out there. The volume on that session, 12 million shares. The volume so far this week, we're at 5 million shares. So not late. And last week, as price was trying to do that same thing, was 11 million shares. So we don't really have the volume at this stage here. But more important than that, what price is doing, Dennis, is it uh, is taking on resistance. And that is its TD9 count breakdown level, 273.83. Let's say forget the volume piece of it. If price can close above 273.83, that's then going to be your signal that price is going to make its way back up to that high that we took a, took a look at on the monthly time frame chart. Not until that happens would we say that that is a likely outcome. So right now what we can say from a longer term standpoint, price is dealing with resistance, both 267.32 and 273.83. The latter is the one that's going to be most important for price to close above on a weekly basis. On the daily time frame, what do we see out here? Let's expand out these charts, just take a better look at it. We have a TD9 count top that was negated out here. So that was a positive, but it triggered a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. So the next bearish reversal candle out here on a daily basis would confirm a short-term top, and that would suggest a pullback to support levels. We don't have that in place right now, but that is something certainly for you to be paying attention to. So to summarize with regard to Amgen, you're dealing with resistance levels until those levels are cleared out here. You got a bit of a choppy market for Amgen. So, Dennis, I hope that that helps you out, and thank you so much for your request. Nancy wrote in, and she wanted to take a look at Microsoft. MSFT is a ticker symbol. Microsoft right now, what do we have? Well, we've got a TD9 count, much like the uh, NASDAQ 100, the S&P, the ES Mini, the uh, Russell, and the uh, Dow. What we've got is a TD9 count pattern that is going to complete, is going to form today. Yeah, I mean, it'd have to have a super rally, get up towards the 320 level to negate what I just said. So you're going to get a TD9 count bottom today. It will complete tomorrow. What should then take place, Nancy, is you should see Microsoft bounce up to the 321.03-ish area. I use ish because that number is going to change. That's the oscillator and change line. If a TD9 count pattern, you've also got wave number seven. So you've got two bottoming signals. Do two bottoming signals make it stronger than one? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. It's just giving you the second bottom signal that is out there. If the bottom doesn't hold, the next area of support on the way down from Microsoft is 307.59. If 307.59 is passed, we likely have an A to B equal CD to the down. No, we will have an A to B equal CD to the downside on the weekly time frame. Now, the swing point that it's dealing with right now is from August the 18th. And August 18th, you did volume of 102 million shares. So far for the week, you've done 50 million shares. So it's on pace to do similar type volume as that swing point. And if price goes close below that swing point, ordinarily we'd say there'd be an A to B equal CD downside. But what Stevie and you need to see, Nancy, is a close below 307.59. If we did get that A to B equal CD to the downside, oops, sorry, wrong spot. Let's try that again. Uh, I'll draw in the A to B line, and we'll just simply uh, move that over to where the C is. We'll give you the approximate price projection to the downside out here. That price, the one-to-one -one price projection, would get us down towards the 284-ish level out here. When we look at the monthly time frame chart out here, the monthly chart is still trading above a key level of resistance. That is the top of its pro. Oh, there's a new profile. Son of a gun. Okay, you've got quite a wide-ranging profile out here, Nance. The top of this new profile on a monthly basis is 352.04. So that's going to be your significant support level, a resistance level. 
support on a monthly basis all the way back to 234 09 and 24884 out there. So we don't need to deal with that just yet. You are consolidating with inside that profile. Uh, keep an eye on the uh, daily time frame chart. It's TD9. Keep an eye on 30759. Let's take a look at the 30 minute chart. Simply know because we know we're going to get a TD9 count bottom that complete uh, that confirms today. Well, it turns out on a 30 minute time frame chart, you have a Roads momentum indicators uh, pattern that has confirmed. What price has been doing since that confirmation dance has been trading with inside its profile. So you know that the key resistance level, you need to see two consecutive closes above to suggest that there is a rally that's going to start because of the daily TD9 count pattern that is present. You need to see two consecutive closes above 312.63. If you don't get that, well, then maybe it doesn't start until tomorrow out there. Support out here. Support, you've got to use the bottom of that Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal, and that would be down at 310.02. That is the low for the day. So that's Microsoft, Nancy. Hope that helped answer your questions. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, put in a request out here. The next request, it really wasn't a request, but I put it in my system anyways because uh, just in case I needed a request symbol, and that is for ACST. So this is for Duffy in the Den. Duffy, ACST out here. It formed a nice TD9 count bottom. It did on the bar following bar number nine. That was on September 22nd. Now price has taken out two breakdown levels. This thing is now trading in resistance. Your resistance level, next key one, is at 297. You clear that, you're off to 376. We'll be right back. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Yeah, folks, so to finish out the show out here, I'll just share with you a couple of things that I have uh, noticed, even though this is a continuous contract for the uh, NASDAQ, just so I can pick up a bunch of data out here. That's not what's important. What's important is yesterday, what the NQ did was it triggered a TD sequential count. That is bar number 13 that you see on my screen out here. Uh, those can lead to some significant uh, rallies or moves to the downside out there or just simply not at all. You need to be aware that that pattern is present. In order for that pattern to give you a buy signal, you need to see a close above the close of the bar four bars earlier. So this can extend itself for a number of days. We don't have that, but on the NQ for the daily time frame, we do have a TD sequential count that formed yesterday. We have some additional TD sequential counts. The Russell 2000, which is having a nice rally out here, that confirmed a TD sequential count and a TD combo count a few days ago on September the 22nd. So bar number four, one, two, three, four, out here that is the trading day of september 22nd and a close above 1776.50 today will actually give you a td sequential buy pattern out there now that's just simply going to take price up to its oscillator and change line at 1796 and if price can clear that then we would see a further counter trend move to the upside maybe it's more than a counter trend move the semis out here the semis doing the same thing they triggered a td sequential count it did that on september 22nd it's bar number four, one, two, three, four. It needs to close today above 33.38.85 in order to trigger that signal. Now, what's important about these counts out here? Well, first, we should expect to anticipate a counter trend rally. The best time for that to happen is really between today and tomorrow with all these TD9 count patterns that are present out there, whether it's US dollar index or whether it's each of the four US equity future contracts. But folks, stay tuned for the great program that we got lined up for you. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Please have a wonderful Wednesday. Take care.